To import 3D models, we use the Model.io framework. We'll provide a URL for the model file and a vertex descriptor. Model.io will then import the file into the structure you see here. The top level is an MDL asset. We're using an OBJ file format which won't have lights or cameras. The vertices are all held in MDL meshes and the groups that we saw in Blender are MDL submeshes. To render the model, we'll convert MDL meshes directly to MetalKit MTK meshes and we'll convert MDL submeshes to MetalKit's MTK submeshes. First, we'll create a model class to hold our model data. Create a new Swift file and call it model. Import MetalKit and set up the class. Create an init with a string file name. Get the model's asset URL. Create an allocator so that Model.io will be able to allocate the memory. Model.io uses its own vertex descriptor type, so in extensions, we'll set up a default Model.io vertex descriptor, just as we set up this default metal vertex descriptor. We can use the previous MTL vertex descriptor and use a convenience method to convert it to a Model.io vertex descriptor. This method returns a Model.io vertex descriptor created from the metal vertex descriptor. When we use Model.io to read in files, we have to convert all the Model.io classes and data to conform to the metal and metal kit APIs. For Model.io to read in the correct components from the OBJ file, we name the attributes. That's told Model.io to use the attribute at index 0 for the vertex position data. The color will come in through material settings, not by each vertex, so we'll delete any reference to attribute 1 in the MTL vertex descriptor extension. We'll use that for something else later and change the vertex descriptor stride to match. As we're only using the one attribute here, we'll have to change the shader struct to only use one attribute too. In shaders.metal, remove the color attribute and temporarily update the color in the vertex function. For now, we'll make our train blue, but later on we'll read in the material colors from the train file. Back in model.swift, we can read in the asset using this vertex descriptor. Model.io reads in several different file formats, so this asset could now contain a whole scene with lights and cameras and multiple models. But we know we're reading in an OBJ file and our train only consists of one model with one mesh and several submeshes. But we'll make our class generic so that we can use formats other than OBJ files. Convert the meshes in the Model.io format to MetalKit meshes. This method returns a tuple containing the array of Model.io meshes and also the array of MetalKit meshes. The Model.io meshes also contain submeshes with the material data, so we'll hold on to those for the moment. Create two new properties in the class and set them in the constructor. Now let's import the train model. You'll find this in the resources directory for this video. Import both the train obj and the train.mtl files by dragging them into the metal renderer group. Check copy items if needed and create groups and check that the target's ticked. Here's the train and here are the material settings for the train. Let's group these into a models group. In Renderer, create a property for the train. Import the train model in init. Later on, we're going to abstract the train out of Renderer so that we can render multiple models in a scene easily. But just for now, we'll do all the rendering in Renderer. In Draw, we want to render the train mesh instead of the vertex buffer mesh. Wrap the existing code in a loop so that we draw all the meshes. 
Add a loop to include all the vertex buffers in the mesh. The vertex buffer is of type MTK mesh, so change set vertex buffer to use the metal buffer. We now have to draw all the sub meshes for the mesh, so wrap the draw call in another for loop and use the index buffers in the sub mesh for the draw call. Remove the old vertex arrays and buffers and setup code. Build and run. And now we're rendering the train. Let's move the train down a bit to see it properly. In shaders.metal, in the vertex function, Move all the vertices down by 0.5. Build and run. Notice how when I stretch the window, the train fills the whole window. This is because we're currently using NDC, normalized device coordinates. All the vertex position values are between minus one and one on the X and Y axes. On the X axis, minus one is at the left and plus one is at the right no matter how stretched the window is. The train doesn't seem to be in 3D yet either. Before moving on, let's review what's rendering in the GPU debugger. We have six draw calls, one for each submesh. In Blender, we could see the different submeshes because they were different colors, but we gave all vertices the same blue color in the vertex function. For each draw call, we can see the geometry drawn for the submesh in the attachment. Let's have a look at the chimney in the geometry debugger. If I move this around, I'm using my middle mouse button, or you can use two fingers on a trackpad, you can see that the chimney is actually being drawn in 3D inside the geometry viewer, but because there's no perspective, it appears flat on the two-dimensional screen.